Hello, good afternoon everyone, or good morning, or good evening, whichever it might be for you. Welcome to our session uh, today with Catherine Storsbach, who is bringing us the world into our classroom. Catherine works with Know My World um, organisation, and she's going to be sharing with us some, some interesting information about connecting. So welcome, Catherine. Thank First of all, so I'd like to thank our sponsors and sorry, <laughs> thank you for our um, to our sponsors and supporters. A very big thank you to Steve Hargaden and the Learning Revolution, who is helping us with organising this this conference this weekend. This has been hosted by the Australia E Series. Um, we would also like to thank Cyber Academy for sponsoring us and allowing us to do a little bit of advertising and so on. We'd also like to thank Coach Carol and Shambles, our resident tech guru, for all of their work and supporting us as well. All right, so this is our little world map. It shows you uh, all the time zones we're in. So all you need to do is just click on the little arrow as it's showing you on the left and then grab one of the little icons and move it across to your part of the world. Now for me, that is there. So if you'd like to grab your little icon and move it now, that would be great. Ooh. Spreading across a few time zones, which is excellent. Michael, you need another cup of coffee, do you? Hey, Gail's still up in Alaska, so thank you, Gail, for dropping in after um, presenting a little bit earlier. Okay, fantastic. So we've got a bit of a spread around the world, which is excellent. Now, I will hand over to Catherine, who's going to tell us all about bringing the classroom in, oh, sorry, the world into your classroom. So thank you, Catherine. Take it away. Thank you, Ned. Hi everyone and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today and having interest to learn more about Know My World. Thank you for being here. As Ness said, you are currently in the session of Bringing the World into Your Classroom by Know My World. To start off, I want to say that Know My World is an international education resource for cross-cultural digital exchanges. The pivotal focus of Know My World is to promote enriching opportunities within and beyond the standard curriculum for no cost. Today, I would like to share with you how we operate and explain to you how you can use us in your own classroom as a very valuable resource. But before I get into more detail, please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Catherine Storzbach, and I'm the Educational Promotions Manager for Know My World. I met Genevieve Murphy, the co-founder of Know My World, one night very spontaneously over a dinner in, um, in Taiwan. We both were working and living there at the same time. Genevieve and I connected on a very personal and professional level. Our stories and journeys had lots in common. Some of the commonalities were traveling and living in different places, working for different international schools, which include Japan, China, and Taiwan, and we both have spent lots of time in refugee camps and orphanages in Southeast Asia, both volunteering and working. Both of us being pa passionate educators share commonalities and having a larger vision for education. This includes creatively working with children and other educators around the world to bring more substance, depth, and love into education. We both have felt very compelled to expand our horizons outside of the more traditional walls and constricting mandates. And we see this especially in North America and Canada and the U.S. Just heavier and heavier mandates are being pushed down. These parallel and common interests allowed us to understand each other very quickly, but with great empathy and a great excitement for education. It is our stories and experiences which connected and bonded us. Soon after meeting Genevieve, I joined the Know My World team. This team comprises of really incredible individuals who work hard to bring classrooms and people together through commonalities and experiences, which then naturally bring about understanding, empathy, and overall greater cultural awareness. 
Being part of Know My World, I'm not only a facilitator for teachers and students, but I also am able to participate in exchanges with my own students. I work at the American School of Taichung here in Taichung, Taiwan, and three of my own classes have been able to participate. They've made connections to students in Australia, Mexico, and the U.S. Now let's take a look at some of the real recent work my students have done from AST. Here, here are some self-portraits, which I just find beautiful, from my third and fourth graders. They did a little writing about themselves, then painted these portraits. When they were completed, we took photographs and exchanged them digitally with the group in Knoxville. Now this group is just not another school. They're an after-school program called the Boys and Girls Club. We also received portraits from the Boys and Girls Club from Tennessee. So we're going to take another look at some more work. The students not only received photographs of self-portraits, but they also received care packages to have more tangible items in their laps. These care packages included candy, treat gifts, games, and toys, which were popular from the other country. And like I said, the self-portraits were exchanged, as well as other pieces of artwork of city and landscapes. If we continue on, you can see that more than just artwork was exchanged, as I've already said. These are handwritten letters. We wrote these letters, sent them in the mail for the Boys and Girls Club to receive them, and then the Boys and Girls Club mailed their own letters, too. I'm going to have you take a minute. I know the quality is not so great on these photographs, but you can just take a look and see some of their writing. These connections and learning opportunities is what Know My World is founded upon. Stimulating conversations and new topics of learning are continually coming about. And I see this on a daily basis. I'll be on my computer, my students will walk into the classroom, and they'll all have a new whole array of questions that we write down and then send via email as soon as we can. Conversation is continually going while they're doing art about what do you think they're doing during the weather at this time, and what do they do for traditional holidays. These classroom connections are what we call exchanges and are facilitated by myself and Know My World staff. The next slide here displays some artwork, not done by my third and fourth graders, but actually by my fifth graders, another art class. They are currently in the exchange now, and they are exchanging with a graduate school in New York. It's New Pulse University. So you can see very obviously the grade, the grade span from fifth graders to grad students. However, both sets of students are doing the exact same type of project, and this project is called Shareability, and it circulates around leadership. It's a six-week long project which focuses on character development, leadership, and global citizenship. Here you can see four different photographs. The very top left one is an art depiction of a boy outside of McDonald's who is offered drugs and his point to stand up and to turn them down. Each student needed to choose a story or experience in their lives when they stood up for something that they believed in, helped someone else, and really showed leadership qualities. The bottom left with the fun three sponge blue people, um, this was Mahati, a girl from India, who experienced bullying on the, on the playground, who was witnessing it, and she stood up and helped someone. The grad students are also taking an experience and story in their lives, writing about it, and doing art depictions to send and to start discussion back and forth. The Shared Ability Project highlights the human condition that we all, that connects us all. The students from both countries are sharing stories with creative twists while constructing art pieces that have self-reflection, they have to really think about it, empathy, and awareness incorporated. Now, it's very easy to see the internal and external learning and transformation which happens with these students. I see it so often. But what is just as important is the transformative experience which also happens for the teachers. 
I can say this very solidly, that these projects have impacted me personally and professionally. Immersing myself into the organization, know my world, my own perspectives, teaching styles, and areas of learning have all grown. I have connected with teachers in schools around the world. The connection does not stop at the project, but the teacher-to-teacher -teacher relationships also continue to grow, and we see this with the students, too, that it's student-to-student. Student. They continue well beyond the project. I have, a more, I have more heightened interest in cultures, a broader understanding of other countries, their traditions, and way of living. And these, cultural, these global cultures are at my fingertips. It provides such enriching experiences, but with substance. And I've seen these exchanges create more immediate results with a lasting impact. Know My World through the invaluable importance of communication on a global scale. We are living in a digitally globalized world. Many students, it seems, have little awareness, knowledge, and understanding of people and cultures outside of their own. We at Know My World are very compelled to create a place where students around the world have an opportunity to generally talk to each other, connect, and learn from each other. Not only students, but we can see this on a daily basis, that individuals of any age, of any race, who have an understanding of other cultures have heightened global awareness, which comes, a greater overall understanding, an emphasis of, an emphasis in empathy, and a deeper appreciation for humanity. And with all of these, natural leadership skills come about. You can see on this slide, we're here at the Know My World homepage. I'm going to take us through and to the Know My World page, so I'm going to take us on a little web tour. I'm going to plug in knowmyworld.org, and also I'm going to copy and paste this to the chat box. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to open it, but again, I'm going to, when the computer allows me, I'm going to put it into the chat box. So there's two ways to access it. Depending on the server, I know lots of people are on it, you may or may not be able to get on. I hope you are, but if you can't at this time, please, after, I invite you after the seminar to, to log on to. I'm going to give a couple minutes to make sure it loads properly and everyone's there. So once we're here at the Nomad World homepage, which is slowly ticking away, let's see. We're going to scroll down a bit. We're going to stay on the page. I'm going to have you come down and select the studies abroad through visual art, Taiwan and Tennessee. I'm going to select it in the web tour box here, too. This is the one that I've already talked about. This is, these are my third and fourth graders who are participating currently with the Boys and Girls Club in the U.S. If it lets me, I'm going to pull it up to show some more examples. So it's going to take us directly to the blog. Down below, you can see a paragraph about exactly what we've exchanged, hard copy and soft copy, plus some more detail. If you go down below, you can see beautiful portraits and work that the students have done and have shared. So it's a fun little swipe box. You can click it left and right. Take a look at some of those photographs. Excuse me, not photographs, but paintings from the students. And the students are so proud, especially when they see them up on the website. They really do quality work and take pride in what they're doing, which allows that connection to go even deeper. This exchange has been so successful. It was only going to last four months, one semester. And students in both countries have asked to continue the exchange. So Janie, who I'm working with currently, her and I have decided to continue this for one entire year. And the students connect sometimes weekly, but every other week through all different types of media and platforms. And so we were very excited to see that they are very excited about it. They continue to write pen pal letters. They've created friendships. 
and they even are in contact outside of the classroom walls, meaning through Line and WeApp, those are some Asian technology apps, but they, they're in contact outside. If you scroll down some more, you can look at some conversations. These were done via email, and some of them are quite funny, like do you use elevators frequently, and some of them are more in depth. So when you have time, at a later date, you can scroll down and look to see the dialogue, which happens back and forth. And it comes so naturally to them, very natural for young students to ask questions and to receive answers and to develop, and their inquiry just goes deeper and deeper. I'm going to take us back to the home page. So, good. Once it loads, I would like to show you a couple more examples. I'm going to share this again in the chat box just to make sure everyone has access to it. Okay. So as we're here, we're going to scroll, scroll down. We've already seen the visual arts, Taiwan and Tennessee. Now we're going to link to the fourth one. It's South Korea and Mexico, Reality Burst Media Exchange. I'm going to click the link here. Okay, good. Click the link here to go to the blog page. This particular exchange was centralized around social activism. It took place between high schoolers in Mexico and South Korea, and I actually personally facilitated this exchange in August 2013, and it was phenomenal to walk through it from beginning to end. With their native languages, not, with their native languages, excuse me, being different, English is what they, what they use as a second language. So first off, the students had opportunity to read, write, and practice English. But then the students had opportunities to share aspects of their daily lives and also depictions of social and political events which were occurring in their countries at this specific time, August 2013. The focus of the exchange was reality versus the media portrayal of cultural and dangers in both respective countries. They discussed realities, portrayals, from a larger community standpoint, as well as their own. There are some YouTube videos posted here and some journal entries. I remember I got to participate in this so much, I got to see all of the student written and video work, as well as see them participate together live. And I remember, I remember particularly this one girl speaking about Kim Jong-il and how it does not affect South Korea as much as the whole world portrays it that it does. So it is fascinating to be part of. So you can see here on the blog page, there's the description box and more work of the content area. Like I said, that they were able to discuss realities of daily life, scrutinize the media's portrayal of cultural and current events, and analyze the impact the media has in creating stereotypes between countries and cultures. While the students primarily use Facebook, a private link to Facebook, for their platform of communication. They also met with each other twice for live discussions and video conferences. Like I said, this exchange was extremely fascinating. I was able to read and witness and see the student work digitally and live. The learning opportunity was also for me because of the networking and the personal relationship I made with one specific teacher in Mexico. Her name is Angela. Angela and I still connect and have continued to stay in touch. We have created a very strong professional relationship around education and just getting to know each other better. We've helped support each other with different projects, curriculum, and personal life issues. Our networking has multiplied. She's helped me with mine. I've given her some networking. And we could not have done this single-handedly. It's a collaborative effort and working together. After we've taken a look, let's please exit out and join back into the Blackboard Collaborative Classroom. We should still be on the slide of knowmyworld.org, the home page. So today, Know My World operates on requests we receive from educators around the world. We match them accordingly with participants ex 
seeking them exchange. We work with the teachers to design very unique collaborative projects based on their own interests and areas that they want their students to learn. While there are other cross-cultural exchanges out there, and there are, and they're also phenomenal, we have a great distinction that sets us apart, is that we personally facilitate your exchange from the beginning to the end. As soon as you fill out a request and put it in, we search our database, get you matched as soon as possible, and walk with you the whole entire way. And this is up to the teacher. It, it, it depends on what they're looking for. We can provide curriculum, we can build projects together, or we're there just purely to connect you with someone else and making sure things are running smoothly. This means that one of our exchange project managers will help you through the entire process. We personally match them, as I've already said, and we continue open communication during the entire thing. And Angie, Angela's and I relationship, is one example how this communication stays open well after the student's projects have completed. Once the exchange is completed, samples are, samples are shared with us and featured on our site, just as we visited now. Know My World has been sustainable for three years due to dedicated volunteers and interns with whom our mission resonates. We have created a multitude of cross-cultural exchanges in classrooms from kindergarten to graduate schools, over 19 countries, and we've presented workshops at global conferences in the U.S., China, Thailand, and Australia. Going on to the next slide, I'm going to give you a minute just to read the material, and then I will continue to talk about it. Know My World wants to make globalization accessible and personal for everyone around the world and to offer a modality to learn rich material about cultures. Therefore, Know My World has created a classroom-to-classroom -classroom digital exchange program. And our vision is that participants learn with, about, and from each other. We operate on three main cornerstones, which you see on the page now which are cross-cultural exchanges. We've talked about them a little in depth, and now we've seen some examples on the website. Story sharing and project-based learning. It's all project-based. Students will not sit down with a single worksheet or open a book. It's very hands-on. These exchanges happen through technology. This may be emailing, blogging, taking photographs, making videos, pen pal letter writing, and live interactions through Skype and Google Hangout, just like Mexico and South Korea did together. Collaborative projects then take place between two or more classrooms, depending. We've had three-way classrooms, four-way classrooms, which are all adaptable to any subject area. And the specific Know My World projects are core curriculum standard aligned. Teachers and other organizations participating receive support one-on-one -on -one from the staff. Exchanges are extremely flexible on the time commitment and project layout. They could happen just from a one-week, one-time exchange up to one year. And we've actually had classes participate for two consecutive years in a row for the students to develop a really substantial relationship together. This depends on the teachers and classrooms participating. It's extremely flexible. There are many opportunities for teachers and individuals alone to participate. The third one is story sharing. So for the story sharing aspect, it is based on individuals around the world doing exactly that, sharing their own stories. Just as you heard in the beginning of this presentation, my own story about crossing paths and linking together with Genevieve, who found in Know My World. So the story sharing and Know My World website is a host to put these for an educational value or as a springboard for personal classroom ideas. 
I've been talking a lot, so I would now like to open this up for discussion with everyone in this classroom together. You, as passionate individuals and as educators, what do you think the benefits are of fostering cross-cultural relationships within your own classroom or organization or after-school program? You can type them in, but we can also allow you to use a microphone and voice them in, which I highly encourage, too. If you'd like to share something, just put up your hand. Um, by doing that, you can um, click on the little hand that's just above all of the names. Excellent. Okay, so Michael. Michael, it seems that your microphone. It seems your microphone is on, but not yet. Yeah, uh, she should be able to hear me now. Can you just give us a smile if you're hearing me. Oh, thanks, Ness. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm the uh, leader of another global education organization, um, so I have a better understanding of the commitment and the work that goes into um, running uh, such an amazing project like this. Um, there's, from the perspective, from our perspective, we can only congratulate you on the commitment and the amount of effort that goes into making these um, relationships and projects work because we know just how difficult they are. Um, it's actually something that when I eventually have my own class, I may well actually come and experiment um, and see firsthand how. Um, your community and your approach works because it certainly has a lot of merit. Um, I know from uh, with the Global Classroom Project we couldn't possibly run it like you do because of the um, we have a di we have a different uh, different project structure, but it's really fascinating to compare and learn from each other's experience. Michael, thank you so much. Thank you for your support and your acknowledgement. You're exactly right. It takes a huge commitment. And the Know My World staff and founders, we work extremely hard on a daily basis. And I can't say it's fun all of the time, but the results, the content that we see, the passion from the students is, is beyond description most of the time. And that's what keeps us motivated and doing exactly what we're doing. And I do, I do invite you, when you have a classroom that it's suitable for, please contact us and we will match you and continue global, global relationships. So thank you, Michael, for your participation. And Ness seems to have a question. So Ness, I've selected you. I'm not sure if I do anything else. Yes. It's so good. Um, I was just going to say that, um, Coming from a place where it's relatively monocultural, it's, it's a really good opportunity to open up to the world and show kids that things are different out there, that it's not just like it is here. And having worked myself in international schools in Japan and also in Papua New Guinea, it's amazing how when you open up the whole world to kids, even just in a classroom where you have so many different people, um, in particularly in an international school situation from different cultures, how much you can learn from each other. And that opportunity for children like mine who are fairly monocultural, um, it's, it's just an opportunity that they normally wouldn't get with our projects like this and projects like Global Classroom. Yeah, and that's, you're exactly right. It really breaks stereotypes. And we see that again and again with the work that's produced. Um, for our exchanges, say if you are participating from the U.S., we don't naturally match you with someone in the U.S. Our goal is to match you outside of the country borders. Uh, but say you're in Japan, and there's so many different subcultures in Japan, and you would like to be connected to one of those. We do that too. That The beauty of this, of the flexibility, yes, but also breaking the stereotypes even within your own country, which can happen. So 
Yeah, I, I find it a phenomenal thing to be working for and with and participating with my own students in my own classroom, that I can do both sides of it. So if there aren't any more questions, I do please send along more, but if not, I'm going to continue on. Yeah, Ness, I'm going to comment, it is a huge change for children. For young and old, with this graduate class, the dialogue we receive from them, they're 45-year-olds, and the way that from the beginning they're writing to the end of the project writing is just a, a significant change that's very visible. So to continue this conversation, and please interject at any time, our next slide is talking about the benefits and results we have found during the last three years during these exchanges. Number one, culture. This is an obvious one, and we've been talking about it. That students gain awareness outside of their own, and even their own culture, which sometimes is easily passed off. Um, another thing, fostering personal relationships and friendships. Now, these do not out when the exchange is complete, and you've heard me say this, that I can say on a personal level, my three classes who are participating have continued building these beyond the project, and it's fascinating. Continued questions, thoughts, discussions happen all of the time, in the hallways, out on the playground, when they come in. And this is why now our project is continuing from one semester to one entire school year. Students work co uh, cooperatively in group dynamics, very, very dynamic groups. While, while they're working, of course, their communication skills are going to develop. And these com communication skills happen inside and outside of the classroom through written work, video preparations, discussions, and all take scaffolding. And another beautiful component is the scaffolding, which happens not only from teacher to student, which is very evident, but student to student, and also outside resources scaffolding. Maybe that's the, the classroom next door to them, or maybe it's another online source that they have found. Students gain awareness of themselves, others, and expand new areas that they didn't even know they wanted to learn. And empathy. I see Michael, thanks for writing that in. Empathy, you're exactly right. This is huge within Know My World. That empathy naturally occurs and develops within individuals naturally. Yes, we, we tie it in, but it just starts to occur. And there are times when technology can remove this human connection and closeness. Know My World is a digital platform, and this is something that I have grappled with personally. I've had internal dialogue with myself. I've talked to the founders. I've talked to my coworkers. But it's also a very difficult thing to have when it's just digital. However, Know My World emphasizes using technology as a resource and as a tool to bring people together. These exchanges are very powerful. Through technology and with the help to, of technology, these students around the globe are connecting, having conversations, relating, sharing personal stories and experiences. It's not creating distance, but creating closeness. And I now see that my grappling with me for me personally. Using the internet as a tool and as a resource changes my perspective completely. We live in the day and age where technology is rapidly changing and we seem to seek immediate gratification more and more and more. These exchanges do provide this, but in a very healthy way and from culturally enriched sources. There's human to human connectivity, which creates long lasting relationships and material. And lastly, exchange project content. This is very obvious that this is what the exchange is results are, but this exchange content can be referred to throughout the entire school year by the teachers and brought into other areas of study to continue it. So now we're going to leap into another question. One, for yourselves. Have you ever done traditional pen pal writing in your own classroom, in your own company, or as a child that you remember? And this could have been this could have happened nationally or internationally. You can type it in or use the mic as well, raise your hand, if you've done something like this. Excellent, Michael. Yes, you still do. Danielle says yes, she has. Michael says, okay, no. You've done pen pals for 20 years, but exchanged scrapbooks. Excellent. 
Okay, sometimes between classes. So a mixture. Oh, for 20 years, wow. Okay, I can say from my personal standpoint, I remember doing pen pals in third and fourth grade, and we did it within the same school district, not even outside of the district in the city, in the same district, and it was fascinating. I remember as a child getting so exciting, excited, opening it up and reading it. So this is exactly what Know My World is basing this off of. That pen pal writing is very traditional and important for students to have connected through the years of education. It's a basic principle that we build off of. Now I want to take you through another exchange project. It's called Journal Swap for Peace. It's a different version of pen pal writing. This is one that's also close to my teaching experience and facilitator work. I facilitated this personally, and four different countries participated, Australia, Mexico, Taiwan, and the U.S. Now, 116 students participated, and let me tell you, it was not easy all of the time to keep things straight. However, it's doable for us, and we're capable of doing more. Eight different teachers, and again, four countries. The Journal Swap for Peace is a project designed to create cultural awareness, empathy, among peers and to promote communication and literacy. It really emphasizes organizational writing skills, which schools really like to be a part of because it's daily curriculum, through journaling about daily life and gaining self-awareness. Through the exploration and documentation of individual occurrences, when these are completed, then they're swapped with the other countries. And the, the students have very tangible written work to see clearly to compare and contrast to their peers in other places. So you can take a moment, the, the font is very small, but you can see the exchange work up on the screen here. So like I said, the students journal, but for seven consecutive days. They include daily experiences, thoughts, ideas of what happens from sunrise to sunset. The journaling can be happened, but is not limited to blogging, PowerPoints, and also scanned diaries. So I know Michael said you said you've done some scrapbook work. This could be easily incorporated and then sent to the mail. After exchanging the journal, students are able to correspond through email or in real time to discuss these. And then discussion and other projects develop. So this is a really, really fun one. So we're going to continue to the next slide. And here's some work done by the students for this exchange. Our work and written work. The qualities of these photos aren't great. Um, but I'm going to read you the one below from Carter. He says, Dear Michael, I don't eat so much seafood, but I don't know about everyone else, and we live, in on, we live on an island. So I just wanted to share some of the personal work that's happening back and forth. From the next slide, here's some more. Here's a work from a student in Mexico of a typical Tuesday. We'll continue on. And here a student in Taiwan shares about his Taiwan vacation adventures. You can see there's a monkey on the car, which is quite funny. I don't think we would probably see that in a picture from the United States. <laughs> so even photographs can stimulate so much conversation. Yeah, I love the monkey too. It's quite funny. <laughs> the monkey on a monkey. And another slideshow. Here's a journal entry from a student in America celebrating on Thanksgiving Day. And the teachers have the decision when they want to place this project so they know when the seven days of journaling are, happen, are happening. Excuse me. Ness is saying that she still writes her own pen pals, which is awesome. And it started in high school. So these are the connections that we want to continue to build. And traditional pen pal writing is just as good as digital. There's not one better or worse than the other. It's just different modes and, and mediums to use. And nowadays, children are being tech heads very, very early on. Okay, let's change the slide. I would now like to walk you through the process of requesting your own exchange. I know Michael doesn't have a question that it could fit in 
at the moment, but when you do, or if you even do now, I want to make sure you can understand the process to contact us. So in the web, um, web box tour, we're going to go back to www.knowmyworld.org. The server has been treating us well. So it's loading now. I'll add this to the chat box one more, once more. And then we're going to click on Digital Exchange Opportunity to Learn and then Request an Exchange. This URL, a new one, is going to be placed in the chat box in case you need to pull up a different browser. I'm not sure how speedy everyone is with their connection. So once you're here, you can see this is a very user-friendly form to fill out. You put your name and your contact email. Also, we highly encourage an alternative contact. Maybe the servers are down and we can't get through to you an email. A phone, a phone number is nice to have as well as maybe additional work. So Ness has a question. Yes, Ness. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not seeing anything at all with your uh, web tour. It might be easier for you if you went to the app share, um, which means we would see exactly what's on your screen. And what's on your screen. Oh, great. Okay, thank you. And if you thank select you one of your web browser, yeah. that's okay. Okay, so I'm at the app share right now. And I have two options to locate, however, it's not what I'm seeing. Yeah, so some people are saying they were seeing your web tour okay, but I couldn't see anything. Okay. Okay, go back to the web tour because others were seeing it. I just wasn't. I'm not sure why. Okay, let me check it out again. Okay, if anyone else has not seen it, let me know too, please. So I'm going to click the request and exchange. Ness, hopefully you can see it now. Good, excellent. Okay. So Ness, one more copy and paste into the chat in case if you need to put on a different browser. So after you fill out your name and email another contact, is is nice to have. Then you can select your group, is it a group or individual, and the organization name, school, maybe you're homeschooling. Maybe you're just an adult who wants to connect with someone. Um, I, I can speak for my mom, actually. She teaches the first year RN program back in the States. She wanted to get her students involved, so I connected her with a Chinese medicine doctor here in, in Taichung, who's actually Hispanic, but living here. And he single-handedly connected with her entire group and did presentations. So this is possible, too. The location is key. If you come from the United States, we don't want to match in the U.S. unless you're wanting that. Or if you have a subculture that you want to be connected to. Developmental level. And then what kind of exchange are you seeking? This can range art, music, food, nutrition. You also have the availability to select other. And specify. You can be very detailed or it can be broad. And as soon as a Know My World facilitator contacts you, they will start collaborating and have an open dialogue to get ideas if you don't have any of your own. What kind of internet connection you have. And then specify. Send us more personal information if you'd like. As soon as we receive this, we contact you within 24 hours. You're put into our database. And we work as efficiently as we can to connect you. We hope to get you matched in a week to two weeks. Now, it doesn't happen always like that. It may go three months without connecting you, but if that's the case, we have projects and curriculum which we provide for you for free as well to keep you interested, your students engaged, until we can match you in the region that you're wanting, or thinking more outside of the box, someone that you thought you didn't want to be matched with, with once you get connected, it works very, very well. So any questions, this is a pretty user-friendly, easy format to follow. We're going to exit back out and go back into the classroom to see the slideshow. So changing the direction a bit more, I want you all to interact with me. 
most conversations and time we sp spend with people are a natural opportunity to learn and share something with that person. So for example, right now we're going to connect on the topic, an area of interest that seems to sweep through lots of conversations these days is a global issue. What global issue do you currently feel is most important? I'm going to give you some time to think about this, but I actually want you to pull it in. You have an option to pull in. And polling, polling type, A through E, multiple choice. If you can send it along, then I can put a little graphic design, hopefully, up on the screen to see what everyone says. Okay, good. I see that Michael put B. And so if you pull it or type in an answer, maybe it comes up near your name. Okay. I see that Cynthia put healthcare too. You don't need to put it, Cynthia, I have your answer down. Give you a couple more minutes and then we need to move along. Okay, C, okay, Ness chose pollution, we have poverty, health care. Good. So this could be a very easy or difficult question to answer. It's a question which hits globally, but also a very direct question that can hit personally. This is a prime example of what Know My World is about, making a global connection to you personally. Now, my friend and I were having a conversation just the other day on this global issue. What do we find is most important? I chose poverty and pollution. She chose hunger and health care. Oh, great. We see the graphic design up on the, the screen. So, wow, wow, it's a tie. Hunger, pollution, and health care. All exactly the same. Okay, interesting. This is great. Um, my friend and I were discussing this, and we realized we had such personal perspectives that we had completely different answers, even though we know all of this is so integrated. But this is a great way how an exchange can begin. Those of you who selected, say, healthcare would be automatically matched together, and you could start a project immediately to begin. Now, if you selected one that no one else did, this does not eliminate you. In fact, it makes it that much more interesting for you and for Know My World staff. We work directly with you to seek and locate someone who does have the same topic of interest. And if that doesn't happen, then we can just broaden the topic and make sure you are actively working with someone to get the learning that you want. This is what makes Know My World so unique. There's flexibility, adaptability, and room to develop in all kinds of directions. This unique component is also featured with another very unique component. These exchanges are matched and facilitated for free. They really are. We feel global communication is a human right, and we want all children to participate. And this is a core mission of Know My World. Before we close this session, I first want to thank you for your time and interest in Know My World and bringing the world into your own classroom or, or organization. I want to ask you one final question before we close down. How can you incorporate cross-cultural exchanges into your own classroom? So you can type these in or raise your hand again. I would love to hear how you could incorporate this into something you're doing. Good, tie it to your curriculum, exactly. Projects can be molded in any way, even into math and geography, however you want to fit this into your curriculum. It focuses on building relationships, which is core. Okay, so you're saying specifically it could work well with your beliefs unit. You're taking time to learn and develop skills and your own capabilities. Oh, good, Michael, I will come tonight. I see. I'm going to, I'll check you out. Great. Exactly. And the students, great, 5 p.m. Okay, I will be there. 
This is excellent because the students gain awareness of others. However, it's a, a reflective mirror. It comes back to them, right back to them, and they start to understand themselves more internally, their skills and capabilities, and grow in self-confidence. And this is a really important thing these days in education. Okay, great. Thank you for your input. I would like to give an open invitation and invite you to continue to be involved with Know My World and Me after this presentation has closed. If there's any more questions, send them along now. You can send them in the chat box. You can contact me at Catherine at KnowMyWorld.org. You can go to our website as well, request an exchange, gather in for information, and connect with Know My World staff to see how we can accommodate the world into your own classroom. Know My World does, does not only thrive on relationships we create for students and teachers through exchanges, but relationships we have for educators and professionals we are already working with. We do run on volunteers, consultants, and interns, and we're always open to the possibility of new people working alongside of us to grow and expand our mission of global citizenship. If you're interested in working for Know My World or contributing, or you can also receive college credit, then please contact us. We can add you to our newsletter and mailing list, and you can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, which you see on this last page. I want to thank you all so, so very much for your time and interest. I wish you all the best in this upcoming year, not only in your classroom, but in other career and personal endeavors. Know My World has been an endeavor which has trans formed itself into a life-changing and lifelong education for myself in the classroom as well as outside of the classroom. This is what education means for me, breaking through the confinements of the four classroom walls. Yes, this is where we have to be physically, but the learning, developing, and connectivity goes well, well beyond these walls. Education is about creatively learning about the material, but more importantly, learning about ourselves understanding and becoming more aware of ourselves, which then lends itself to natural learning and with authenticity. I want to thank Ness for monitoring this session and all the sponsors who've made this conference possible. And thank you for participating. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Catherine. And that was a fantastic session, and I know that I got a lot out of it, and I'm sure Michael did too because it's one of his big areas of in interest. Um, a huge thank you to you and Know My World for participating. Um, without the, the presenters, this conference wouldn't happen. Um, so you can see here there's some information there for you, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to take one of our little badges and put on your blog page or whatever to say you've participated, you're quite welcome to. There's information on our NING. Um, starting in five minutes, we have a session with Joe Freitag, who's looking at gifted and talented students, and also with Karen, who is uh, looking at engaging um, young adults with apps. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming. <laughs>